living proof, living proof. It's pretty safe to say. What's going on team? Proof here. And today I'm coming at you with a brand new recruit report. And if you guys are new here, this is the way I used to do it before the standard stuff came out when I lump them, lumped them together. And it's probably going to be the way I go back to doing it for the next wave of spike support when it comes around. Just because it lets me really dig into a card more and it lets me not feel as rushed to make the video more bite-sized and concise to try and fit in multiple cars at the same time. But that's okay, that's another time for later. <laughs> and today I'm coming at you with a card, a new promo card that Bushro releases part of their series, which I think are our world's promos, kind of like you exchange them or BCS promos, like you exchange them for the cars at events if you turn in a particular thing, like a particular car from a set or something like that. But the card for spikes that we got today is concealed Angela and the fun thing about this car is that in Japan it came out as the car of the day for them today which is my birthday <laughs> so I like the joke that Bushiro knew today is my birthday and they decided to put the spike car for today when they could have put it in any of any of the other previous days that were coming out that or that have previously come out so it's like a fun little joke that runs around my Discord that Bushiro knew and they chose to release the card on my birthday. So I thought that was really cool as like coincidentally thing. And something that you might notice today, in addition to my birthday, I have this nice little fly hoodie on. <laughs> this courtesy of my wife, uh, she got it as a birthday gift to me. And it's kind of funny because I've briefly talked about wanting to get myself a hoodie and I never went through the means to get it. And she says she don't remember me talking about it, and and if she doesn't, that's kind of just really cool how we were in sync like that. But as you can see, it has my bear logo on the front, and then let me see if I can get on the screen here. See if you guys see it. On the back, I have my LP logo on it. So it's really nice. It's really fly, and I really enjoy it. And I think it's really good <laughs> so much love to you baby uh, thank you very much for getting me this really nice hoodie that I've been looking for and I can't wait for the rest of tonight to happen but again the card is conceal Angela and her skill says for continuous on rear guard if you call two or more cars by your card ability which is superior riding or superior calling or two cars are put into your soul this turn, this unit gets plus 10,000 power. And there's so much going on with this card that more than meets the eye, Transformers. <laughs> so I wanna get go ahead and start talking about it. So Conceal Angela is quite the interesting card because it kind of took the good parts of White Tight End and Funky Bazooka and fused them together to become a super thing. <laughs> Because you have the power of white tight end for an easy condition, and you have, um, if you call things out with Funky Bazooka, the Funky Bazooka gets the power as well. So you took the two good parts of those two tech cards and you mash them together, and it might become a core card in the future, which time will tell. And her skill is interesting because it's two specific things that need to be done in total so you need to either call two cards through superior calling or you need to get two cards into your soul by some form or measure if you get one to one then the ability doesn't go off so that's something very important to keep in mind so to give you guys a starting point on interactions i listed out a bunch of ways to be able to achieve either two cards in soul or two superior calls and i'm going to put those on the screen here i'm not going to go through all of them just because that will take a lot of time but I will point out that the most efficient and resource conservative ways that you can get it is by using General Safe Read on a Gyro Slinger. Because with General Safe Read skill, you shove Gyro Slinger into the soul, you search out a copy of Gyro Slinger, you call it out to the field, and then you resolve Gyro Slinger's skill, which is put a card from your hand into the soul, and then you superior call something based on your Vanguard's grade, which would be you look at your top three, call one out, and now you've met the condition for Angela in both ways there but you only get plus 10 because it's continuous ability it doesn't keep stacking 
throughout the course of the turn. And I like that way just because for one counter blast and for one gyro slinger, you can meet the condition very quickly. The other ways to do it is that if you have an other resource, happy ways, I guess you could say conservative ways, is if you have one of your Bracky Juggernaut Wonderboy trio on the board, if you use their beginning of the main phase skills, you can put one in, you can put it into the soul, call a copy of it out, and then you can resolve the on place ability for those cards. If you have two of them out, you automatically meet the condition for Angela and you quickly have an 18k booster out on the board. So that's really fun. Other other means to get it are kind of interesting, but those are the two main ways that suck out for me that would quickly get you the condition. And on the premium side of things, the best way is obviously through our, through our boy Agrius because if you have Angela on the board and you bind three things and call two things out, set off obviously two of the things that you call out would be Angela plus another thing or your whole board again, and you have a plus 18 or you have an 18k booster ready to roll. And with the way she's worded, she counts herself as one of the cards that can be called out through a skill. So if you call her out plus one card with Agrius, it meets condition. If you call her out in the midst of your Picaro chain, uh, then it works out that way. So I want to talk about some of the pros and the cons that I noticed for this particular card. And so on the pro side of things, she could be an 18K booster. Unlike White Titan End, which needed to attack to get the plus 10, Angela can just casually chill in the back row and keep boosting up your front row. And it makes it really nice for if you want to put your force mark on your vanguard or on a different rear guard circle to power up one of your weaker sides as well. Excuse me. Uh, one of the things that comes to mind is you have um, a 10K, such as your Spike Bouncer and you meet the condition for Angela behind it, it's only a 28K line versus being weaker than that. Or if that's on a four circle, it'll be, 20, it'll be 38K and you can have a bracky plus something else on the other side. So really quickly, the power can scale up, especially when I saw it in testing, it was very easily to meet the condition early. Unlike White Tight End, which needs to have a more of a full field setup, Angela can be achieved just by meeting the condition via spike bouncer into jowl slinger slinger into bouncer early on if you use jowl slinger and you hit with the early ganon angela is suddenly active it just makes your opponent more uncomfortable quicker because you can just have a plus 18k line on any side very early on and another pro is that she rewards you for playing your deck naturally and what I mean by that is if you have the condition via say one juggernaut trio plus general safe read, obviously one of your game plans is to thin the deck out for um, normal units. So you naturally you're going to put the jowl or the juggernaut into soul, search out a copy, and then you're going to counter blast one, put something to the soul, call out something else with general safe read, and then all of a sudden just by doing what your deck does normally, you filter out two cards from your deck, and now if you call an Angela after that, the condition has been met for the continuous skill, and now you have an 18K booster or attacker, whichever one you prefer. And her flexibility in that regard is really nice, because unlike White Tide and the Funky Bazooka, you kind of felt compelled to keep calling in front of Funky Bazooka to give it that power, which can be natural, but in other times it could be awkward for your particular field setup just because you need to meet the condition otherwise you're going to have just a vanilla 7k back there or for white tight end you need to have four units on the board when you otherwise probably don't want to and as more and more clans get field control options especially now when we have shadow paladin out which for um phantom blaster dragon he can just casually burn down three of your cards and leave you with not much else to do and because of that, you can play a little more conservatively while still having that impressive power on your board. And that's what I really like about Angela so far in my testing, is that in addition to all that other stuff, it, it just very easily meets the condition and you can just keep playing your deck in a normal fashion. You might tailor your deck for it in some means or some form or fashion, but other than that, like the deck doesn't need to 
what's the term, what's the words? Like you don't need to do anything really extreme to fit her in. She just fits in really casually into your deck. And as I mentioned before, her skill is continuous. So if she's one of your cards that you call out through the skill, it still activates. So say you use a, a Juggernaut Trio and you need to meet the condition, but all your other copies of stuff on the board is gone for Safe Read, but you have Angela out, you can suck in Angela with Safe Read, call out another Angela, and now that Angela becomes a 28k attacker or booster because you've met the condition of calling two cards out, which is really nice and really, really economical to have. So those are a lot of the pros I thought of. I listed out some others on the screen as well if you guys want to check those out. And if you guys have any other pros that I haven't thought about, just because it's kind of a quick um, first look at it pretty much, uh, let me know down below. And as for the cons, she has a couple cons, but I think the pros she has far outweighs the, the actual cons that she has. So for a con that I've listed out, she doesn't work with regular calls, so it requires some, some sort of resource investment with something you need to keep in mind, such as your counter blast for safe read, or having cards in hand to meet with Gyro Slinger, or making sure you protect your Bracky Juggernaut um, Wonder Boy, just in case you need to meet the condition in that fashion. Otherwise, you're going to have just a vanilla 8K booster back there. So it's something that you need to keep in mind just in case you need to meet the condition at a timely manner. Otherwise, you're going to might like it helps push you through the rest of the game type of scenario. And there's limited main phase soul slash superior outlets at least in standard at the moment which makes it slightly harder to meet the condition in the main phase like the because the bracket trio juggernaut trio whatever you want to call it they activate at the beginning of the main phase which is contingent on living through your opponent's turn which requires you to protect it which requires you to invest the cards from your hand but if you can't protect it all of a sudden if you have one counter blast for safery but no other means to activate it in the main phase, then you can't, you have just the vanilla 8K either on the board or sitting in your hand not doing much. So since there's limited main phase abilities that actually in the main phase, it kind of makes it a little bit harder to meet the conditions. And you might want to keep that in mind when you're building your deck with Angela in mind. So it's not a hard, not like a super negative, cause like it's not like she's What's the term? I like she's bad for the deck because I've really enjoyed it in my testing so far. But it's something I've kept in mind is like I wish I had a way to get another card and soul in the main phase here. And there's limited ways to do that. So something just to keep in mind. But all in all, I really, really enjoyed the card. I think she's a really solid addition to the Spike, Spike Brothers team, Spike Brothers Fold. And I'm really excited to keep testing it out. I'm going to be doing some, some little madman university mechanics out here and seeing what I can come up with for Angela and mine. But so far in my initial testing, I've constantly had one on the board and it's been very easy to meet the condition either as one of the, the ways I mentioned before with the Bracky Trio plus General Safe Read plus Gyro Slinger. I even got it off by putting the card in the soul with Ganon uh, in the middle of my battle sequence, which is really funny to see. <laughs> But all in all, I really enjoyed the card. I'm not gonna call it core or tech right now because it's really early and I wanna see what more, ha what is more in store for the card in the future. So, hope you enjoyed this, hope you look out for more. I still have those replays for the 12 crit spikes for premium coming down the pipeline. And yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time, peace, be easy.